What's up guys? Welcome back to the McDaniel Motorsports channel. Chris here, working on the Charger again. Uh, I wanted to uh, show you the brake line progress. I got uh, probably 80% of the hard line in the car. That big long run on the driver's side is now in the car and tight, which is great. All the soft lines are in. Um, and I just, have, I just have like the smaller Sorry, dogs just bark at everything. Anything and everything. So, where was I? Oh, brake lines. So, here's where I'm at. And at first, I thought the driver's side was a bust because it's aftermarket, but my uh, intuition was incorrect. So, here's the soft line drop to the rear end. You can see how it connects there. To that three-way guy there with the vent, which is pretty cool. Got the original clips restored. Got my tab here, a little bracket that hangs down and bolts to the to the bottom of the seat pan there. Oh, sorry, I'm new. New at camera work. So And it runs here, and at first I thought this was kind of funky, how it jogs over the frame here. But it's really uh, the only option, unless you go through the frame, which is in factory, and you have to see my, my factory clips here. I think it came out really good, really clean, and uh, of course, more factory clips. And you can see all the way down. Here. So this is directly under the driver's seat. And so where it got a little dicey goes through the subframe connector, which is this guy, and not touching on the entry so it doesn't rub through and lose my rear circuit one day. And then I realized why they put these slots in here. So that guy is also free floating in there, not rubbing. And then it goes up to here, comes out that hole, free floating as well. And I say free floating just because it, you know, if, it, if it's sitting on the metal, it'll eventually rub through. And that is not good. So you see my one last factory clip there. Let me see my junction here, that light there, alright, so there's that fresh, it's brand new, not too shabby, so this guy, this brake line here is the one that goes across the firewall, so let me show you that, before I get up, here's the soft line, driver's side soft line just I have to get some uh, dash 3 90 90 degree fittings for this well I think I'll just do straights actually straight fitting will probably work the best if I do 90 I'll, it'll have to be stressed that won't work so I have to do straights so I'm glad we had this conversation all right so let me get up here So this is a pre-bent line. This one goes along the firewall, as you can see. And there's clips. Glad I uh, kept those clips there because those basically capture that line. And you can see how it basically just jogs. And it hits all three clips. There's one over there. You kind of see. There. Yep. Yeah. So, I got my vintage air my vintage air system um, they for some reason sent me a polished compressor which I didn't ask for I really don't want but time is of the essence and I don't want to wait and deal with sending it back so I'll probably just hit it with some with some steel wool at some point I'm just not not really into the polish thing myself 
um, but a lot of stuff just comes polished for some reason it's kind of weird but my valve covers well, they were raw I, I liked it like that and in fact they're just kind of rough so I, I had to hit them with some steel wool um, which they still don't look right I don't like them so anyway I'm working on those problems so today we are mocking up the accessories so basically it's a full start over on the accessories so as you saw in my last one of my last videos I had all the accessories marked mocked up and I was waiting for this guy to show up this beautiful polished compressor uh, to each his own just not into it um, but luckily it's easy to make it make it look not polished got all my hardware set up for the ace this all comes in the the vintage air system they give you a bunch of extra uh, you know, shims and standoffs and washers and whatnot which is pretty cool I still have a lot of factory hardware that I'm going to reuse for like the water pump and stuff um, so the one thing and, and again these heads these heads come at a price obviously they're not only monetarily but they come at a price uh, labor wise as well so remember how I discussed the the heads coming off you know if you look at them from this angle you can see that see that the passenger side head is pretty pretty well back there compared you know compared to the, the timing chain uh, well that's the block rather so basically the block stands off the passenger side head and these are based on a Victor head so basically it's a carbon copy of a Victor head but they're CNC ported and polished and all that happy horse crap um, but the driver side stands off much more so I'll give you a visual with them both so you can see the difference there from this guy to that um, so so that causes an issue with fitting up that compressor brackets um, so with those brackets on I, I made a line here and so I have to remove about a half an inch of the corner of this guy in order to get a nut back there with, an, with a, a nylock locking mechanism on it so there just wasn't enough room so I'm going to take a die grinder right now and grind my head my my really expensive head so but air conditioning I gotta have it I don't care I don't care I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to have air conditioning so um, even put a polished compressor on my car just to have it so judge me if you will so um, anyway I'm gonna get the die grinder out and go to town on this thing Uh, grab me a rag to go over this distributor. shavings are going to be hot so I'm going to put a little tape here just to protect the paint A, uh, a uh, carbide bit. They're pretty expensive, but they're absolutely necessary when you need them. <laughs> Different bit. This is a barrel, barrel shaped bit.
kind of trying to set the depth with this thing. And then I'm going to flatten it out with a rollock. Just, just keeps catching an edge. Yeah, time lapse. Engage, time lapse. <laughs> Another use for a band file. If you don't have one of these, you need to get one. further on this. Can you make that line disappear? Or yeah. do you think that's good enough? Uh, I, I made it to where um, you okay. basically cut the line. So remove the line? Right. right. That'll be an eighth of an inch. Okay. <laughs> kind of create a beveled edge here, just so it looks a little more natural. Even though his heads are like super squared off, it just makes I guess it just makes me feel better. Almost. Almost there. <clears throat> Knowing when to say when is the hard part. <clears throat> Walk away. I can't. Okay, I'm done. The end result. Not too shabby. We're really just trying to achieve to the line, but you know, sometimes I just can't leave it alone. So I'm walking away now. Good enough. Good enough for who it's for. All right, so I have this 3 8 stainless fuel line that I'm trying to install here. There's the jog from the outside pinch, uh, pinch weld into the inner frame on the passenger side. And so here's the issue. So the way it runs normally is from up in there. See the sender? It runs up along there and it goes down and then it follows the frame up here and then out here it picks up right here and then you can see there's clipped holes so I have the original OEM clips to clip the fuel line. The car came with the 5 16th but the fuel line clips seem to accept the 3 8 just fine um, so there's that first clip there. And it's light here. Uh, there you go. So you can see fuel line clip there. And got one there too. And there. And then it's supposed to jog. Get my bearings here. So this is the outer passenger side rail, or the, the pinch weld here. And then it goes jogs in here and then now we have subframe connectors in the way which creates a whole nother issue which is the issue I'm speaking about so let's 
So what I'm doing here is what I have to do is make make this fuel line do the jog through this slot that comes in the fact and the uh, subframe connectors and has to make a, a fast right hand turn into that hole there that guy right there and then go this way so this is the original slot that came in the frame uh, subframe connectors and if only it ran on this side of the frame because it would be an easy deal but of course it's not um, so I am slotting this more to make life easier bending that stainless line that 3 8 line is quite a bit of effort so um, I basically I'm making this thing come back a little bit further just to make that jog a little easier I don't want to bend or, or kink that line so <sighs> yeah so where that goes once we get it through here it goes right through there um, see anything these gloves are not swipe gloves anyway. so yeah the, the fuel line continues up to there and picks up the mechanical fuel pump so yay for me so got my trusty 90 degree die grinder with the carbide bit these things are magical but they are also tough to use at times but um so yeah let me uh, get set up here and you can watch so now you can see what i'm dealing with here It's almost there. Oh my iron. Stupid camera. These gloves. They're supposed to be touch friendly. They're not. Dude, come on man. What is the deal? Alright, well, you can kind of see it in there, hopefully. Finally, now it works. Stupid thing. Hard line. What a great idea. corner we should be okay So now you can see I've made the turn and it's through the torsion bar cross member. So, <laughs> as you can see, it's over there between my bike and <laughs> the fabrication bench. So, yeah. Should be interesting, right? So, wish me luck. Just 
trying to get to this job right here. You can see it. You might not be able to see it. See, we got this much through. It's been kind of a pain. And I gotta get from here to there. There's this 90, uh, this back to back 90 here. So this is the one, this will run down the pinch weld inside, outside of the pinch weld, or inside, sorry. And then this jogs over and goes through where we're feeding it, so hopefully it'll work out. You guys will find out when I do. Hopefully it's a positive outcome. Just kind of feeding it through. Just a little peck on the outside of the quarter panel. All right, stupid hard money. So, I think I'm all right. I think I'm all right. the car not a huge deal just a little little peck right there from this stupid thing I think or yeah eh. yeah my own worst enemy sometimes so it'll be fine I'll fix that so yeah don't buy uh, the stainless if you have a subframe connector, it's it's not good. Uh, so I'm gonna have to take the tire off, which is fine. I'll probably do that here in a few minutes. But uh, it's in. Now I have to straighten it underneath the car and make it look pretty, which uh, should be doable. I'm thinking. I hope. Yeah. All right. Got the fuel line in, some clips holding it in place. Let's see where it runs up inside the inner fender wheel. And then it jogs around the, fen the uh, frame rail there. And back to the tank. Not too bad. It does need to be massaged a little bit so it's not bent and weird. But overall, I think it looks pretty good. Stuff right here. Let's go up. But yeah, factory clips working good. Put those in there. And then get it off so it's not rubbing on those. And then this whole line here needs to be reworked, which will be fun. That was the one that I had to bend and mangle to get it through. So, but it is running down the frame rail. So I'm happy with that. Alright. Alright guys, well, one last update here. 
So the, uh, the compressor is mounted, it's fixed, so there's no adjustment on it. So we believe that's where it's gonna be. Um, we're still messing with the alternator. There's a couple ways to mount this alternator. Um, neither have worked for us yet, but we're learning as we go again. And uh, you know, it is what it is. This stuff just is all normal. Everyone goes through this, unless you buy some sort of serpentine kit that costs $3,000. Most likely this is what you have to run into and that's okay. So we'll work it out. Um, and then of course all this stuff has to be blown apart and powder coated and cleaned and, and nicely painted and whatnot. So um, going for that factory look, obviously it's not because of that. It is terrible and hideous looking, but uh, it'll be nice. So you know how we do it. Um, but anyway, that'll be it for this week. And uh, our little channel is growing slow, but it's growing and uh, we're working our butts off here. We want to make sure we get a video out minimum once a week. Anyway, thanks for watching. We really appreciate your support and uh, so many kind comments have come over and a lot of really supportive people out there. And um, anyway, but uh, tell a friend, if you know anybody who's into this kind of thing, we build cars and this isn't going to be the last one. This is one of very many to come. So. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Take care.